After a four-year hiatus, award-winning playwright Kiara Alegria Hughes has returned to theater. She's directing a play based off her memoir, My Broken Language, where she spotlights Latina identity and culture by sharing her own family story. With Puerto Rican mom and Jewish dad, Hughes highlights challenges that often come with trying to navigate multiple ethnic and cultural identities. She is known for her Tony Award-winning musical, In the Heights, and her Pulitzer Prize-winning play, Water by the Spoonful. Last week, I sat down with Hughes and actresses Sabrina Guevara and Daphne Rubin Vega, who star in the stage adaptation of My Broken Language. Kara, I want to read you something you said in a speech delivered four years ago. I fear that the ways theater has harmed me are winning out over the ways theater has nourished me. What was the harm and why come back now? Part of the harm is that, you know, our, our national institutions develop memory just of their habits over the years. And Latinos did not evolve with the regional theater and the national theater landscape. And so writing out of my Boricua identity, out of the Philly Rican stories I inherited, um, and bringing those stories to spaces where actors are, you know, there's Latina actors performing on stage to essentially a historically white institution. It's after a few years that accumulates and it starts to feel like, what's going on here? And are we performing identity or are we performing our truth? Um, and it can be confusing. It can yeah. be exhilarating because you are crossing cultural boundaries, um, but it can be alienating. And so I took a step back and I said, let me write a book. Maybe that will reach different audiences. My Broken Language has been described as El Barrio in Philadelphia during the 90s in a Puerto Rican family held together by women recalling the uplift, the grief, the spirits, the dance, navigating the margins of many communities. They forge a language all their own. As true as it is of the play, it seems like it is true of all of you as a community of working actors off stage. I wonder when you have been this for each other. I think we've created uh, a family and we have become pillars for each other. The process of rehearsing this play has been really illuminating. And has brought me back to myself because I've felt the wounds as well. And we have become uh, each other's touchstone so that we can come home. And it's a celebration and uh, joy and rapturous at the same time that we're spending time with the pain, the valleys that inevitably cross all of our lives. Roles for complicated, interesting women are hard to come by. You layer on being Latina and having to convince casting agents that you could play any role. Roles like this don't come around every day. I thought perhaps a career was supposed to look a certain way um, because of how uh, what I saw out there. Also having people say, well, you don't really look like an actress or that's not the dialect that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes out of your mouth, it sounds a little different. Um, to know how to um, navigate those comments, you find where you do belong. I remember when Kiara said to me, uh, yeah, no, this is an industry that doesn't just not care about you. It really does want to keep you down. And I remember the, the just the heartbreak mm. of that and, and agreeing and here we are, years later, you know, we got over that, and now we're telling stories again and forging a language. Your frequent collaborator, Lin-Manuel Miranda, has said, describing you, that you are in touch with spirits, a woman who went into playwriting because she sensed that her family stories, those in Puerto Rico, those in Philadelphia, would fade if she did not give them language. I wonder what it has been like to work on staging this production while also watching what is happening on the island of Puerto Rico. In the context of um, knowing that our loved ones are maybe still without power there on the island and our community is, um, is struggling on the island, it's, it's, it's planting a flag and saying there is still joy, there is still resilience, there is still um, a part of our spirit that finds a way that's actually genius at finding a way, because we've had to. It's, it's not random genius, it's, it's inherited that comes out of, of real practice. Um, and so that's part of what we're doing is saying, you know, we, we are here. Um, 
I like to say when, when my mom's generation arrived in Philadelphia, they had to build the community. They didn't have time to tell their story. I had the time to tell the story. And so as the island is undergoing crisis and, um, and hopefully building resilience and new ways forward, the storytelling has, has to keep up. You know, we are a part of American history. Um, I feel that strongly and loudly. It was not in my high school history class, so I'm doing my little bit here and on the stage to say, no, we're part of the, this American records, too. I remember when you were first staging Water by the Spoonful, um, your cousin, about whom this is based, um, was in the audience, yes, sitting next to you. And his leg was shaking and you were so nervous because you're like, oh my God, like I've told a story that's not just mm. my story to tell. This story, I mean, you're cracking the whole family wide open. Do you have those nerves this time around or now do you sort of know it's gonna be okay? The reason I started writing the play was because I remember the year we danced hardest. It was the year that Bachata Rosa came out. Yes. We were shaking our butts all the time. Like we played the tape so often the tape broke. Yes. It was it's one of the most joyous <laughs> years in my memory. It's, it was also the hardest year for us because there was mm -hmm. so much loss that year. And I said, how can that be? How can it be that we danced? Like, like no one knew joy like we did the year that it was funeral after funeral. It was the 80s and 90s. We remember these times in cities, it was very hard. And I said, I have to write about that. That's, there's something special there in that those two things coexist together. And, um, and so, I, you know, I have to be real. I, I'm, I'm dealing with painful times in my family and joyous times. And sometimes the medicine, you know, even when you're trying to heal, can reopen the wound a little bit. Mm. Um, so I just try to be careful and loving in the work, but also be honest and let the work go there to those real and deep places.